Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. This will be a very quick guide just to highlight some uses for the preserve opacity feature. It's what I've used here to create this flat graphic uh, shading and lighting with the sheen and here the two tones with the text and frame. So things that you would use in Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer, Photoshop, um, so here I'm using it as a very quick shortcut to make a limited kind of clipping mask to get these results. So the Apple user guide explains the preserve opacity feature as something that's there to limit the opacity of overlapping layers. So let's have a look at how it's used. First of all, I'm going to show you how I would usually uh, clip an object to sit inside another. So with, okay, this one here, I'm going to put this white rectangle uh, inside of the pink square. So I would give the white rectangle an image mask and I'll use the pink rectangle as the source. Then I'm going to turn back on the source. So now this white object is confined to the boundaries of the rectangle. And I use this uh, quite often to get work done. It works well enough. Alright, let's do the same thing with preserve opacity. So I'll select this white rectangle and all I'm going to do is come to properties and check this box here, preserve opacity. Right, so now we can only see the rectangle wherever it overlaps with the pink rectangle. So that's a really quick way to make a kind of clipping mask to confine one element within the boundaries of another and then be able to work with it like this. Okay, but there's a catch. You see, if I turn on a background, you can see we lose the effect. So the solution there is whatever group you have the preserve opacity in, apply an image mask. I'm going to add an image mask to this group and the preserve opacity is restored. I know what will happen when I do that, but I don't really know why uh, my level with Motion 5 is not quite there yet. I know what's going to happen when I use it that way, but I couldn't explain to you exactly why it works that way. Just in the future with learning curve, I'll find out. Alright then, so that's how Preserve Opacity works. Let's have a look at some of the use cases for it. Let's start with this airship. It's just made with motion shapes from the tool set here. And I have given it this light sheen shading by using a method from Vector Graphics. There's a shape sitting over it and the shape's colored white, but the opacity is dialed down, which gives us that effect. But then in Illustrator or Affinity, I would want to clip, clip everything so that you can only see the effect within the boundaries of the balloon shape. To do that in motion, I've added another shape to cover everything. And then I've masked the group to be confined within this shape with that image mask. And then we get the result. Okay, let's copy this group and show how easy it is to do the same thing just by using preserve opacity. So I'll get rid of the clipping mask shape and get rid of the image mask. And so now we just have our balloon group and the shading shape. So I'm just going to come over here to properties and turn on preserve opacity. Nothing's happening because there's a background behind it and so I'll just grab this group and add an image mask and then the preserve opacity is activated. 
So I think you can see that by using Preserve Opacity you can save a lot of steps. I've only just started learning um, getting into Preserve Opacity and it definitely is saving me time. Let's have a quick look at using it with title text. Alright, so I'm just going to drop the title text under the two shapes and for each shape I'll just turn on Preserve Opacity so in just those uh, three steps I created an effect that I would have to use uh, various masks and copies for otherwise and again if I turn the background on we're going to lose the effect but then I will just add an image mask and everything seems to be restored like I said before I know that it works I'm not really sure how uh, how it works or why it works that way but it's definitely useful so we can see here that um, you can use multiple instances of it right and so one will push out the other one I'm just still learning things as as I go along so in this example here Right, so I have some text and I've just applied an extrude filter to fake a 3D effect. I have the frame as well and just being able to use the preserve opacity with this shape, you can quickly I get an effect that would take numerous steps with masks and duplicates to achieve around the side to get the the appearance of 3d I've just duplicated the rectangle shapes and shifted them over on their X axis to create the illusion of depth and there's another one here. I did the same thing to create the, the dark in the side. And I, can't, I don't know why it works as well as it does, but applying the preserve opacity instantly creates um, good results that I would use lots of steps to achieve otherwise. Oops, right, I'll just grab the whole group and move it in. With this Apple graphic here, I have a couple of preserved opacity objects. Let's turn the background on and turn off the image mask so we can see. So I have just this bezier shape giving us the sheen on the leaf and I have this oval here giving us the sheen on the apple. If I turn the image mask back on you can see how they're working together. Let's grab this sheen though and duplicate it and move it back. So uh, I'm still just learning the ins and outs of preserve opacity but I'm seeing so much potential here uh, in creating flat style graphics with motion. Uh, so you can see what's happening is as we do this, then the leaf itself is being influenced. So what we'll do is grab this leaf group. I'm going to stick the bezier that's acting on it inside it. 
and I'm going to move the group up and above. And so you can get uh, independence and let some things act on other objects while other objects are th free of it. Um, I'm not still exactly 100% sure of how it works, but uh, with a little bit more um, practice and experimentation, I think I'll definitely improve. If I was to take this Bezier now and come into properties and maybe just the opacity up and down, I can restore the look I had before. And I think you can work with the blend modes with preserve opacity on as well. Alright, so that's looking at different ways to apply it to flat graphics, static graphics. Let's look at how we can animate with it. I'll just close everything up here. Turn off this group and turn this group on. Here we have uh, some title text and this element here that I named light one, it's just a, a line, a line shape that I drew across, it's at an angle. Now let's turn off the image mask, you'll be able to see it clearly. Okay, so the line is at an angle and I've applied a glint filter to it to give it some uh, brightness there. Let's keyframe this to cross uh, the text. So preserve opacity is clipping it to sit within the title text. And I'm going to grab it and move the move it back here and let's see, let's do this big one here over two seconds. So I'm going to set a keyframe. to two seconds and drag it over. I'm just going to make this linear. Alright, now I'm going to duplicate it and with this copy I'll rename it, I'll come into style, I'm going to reduce the width and Oh, not by that much, about that much, and I'm going to bring the playhead to 15 frames and shift left bracket, move the endpoint forward so that it comes in later. And then I'm going to grab this keyframe node here and pull it back so that it overtakes the big one there. And let's do that one more time. So I'm going to grab this this guy, duplicate him, and I'm just going to hmm, bring playhead forward, say another 10 frames from here. And shift left bracket to offset it. And I'm going to have this one move even faster. Just working roughly here. How about that? How does it look with no background? Okay, so there you go. Um, I've just really recently discovered Preserve Opacity and I'm really uh, happy that I have. I think it's going to open up lots of opportunities with Motion 5. Hey, thanks for checking it out. I hope that's useful for you and your future projects. Thanks for watching.